Today we're here in Soho to talk to a watch collector. This watch collector is a guitarist, singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winner, and a friend of mine. His name is John Mayer, and today we're talking about watches. John, good to see you. Good to see you too. So first question, what was your first great watch, or how did you get into watches today? My first great watch was a Rolex Explorer 2. I had the same experience that everyone else has when they first get a really nice watch. People always do this. Wow. And, and I think it's more than just the weight of the movement in the, in the case, in the bracelet. It has some other sort of a thing and you go, wow, you know, and, and, and that was sort of the beginning for me. Are there any times that, that you think that you've lost or any times that you regret buying a watch? Anything that you bought yeah. and you just don't wear? Or? Yeah, the first 12 watches. <laughs> <laughs> the first 10 to 12 watches where you think you're amassing a collection, yeah. you're not. Then, I think it was like a double red seed dweller. Then I kind of got it. I kinda, it. It turned. That got me into old things. There's an art community. There's people who collect guitars. There's people who collect bottles of wine. There's people who collect cigars. You aspire to do well in life and maybe you pick up a passion. There's always something to aspire to. I remember the first time I was at Cellini in New York and I saw a Langenson datagraph and it said 45 on the back of it. And I went, no, that's not for me. That's not, that's never, never, nope, could never. And, and if, you're, if you're meant to sort of uh, keep investing your time and energy and money into it, then you eventually sort of go, oh God, I did that. Oh God, I, oh God, I did that. <laughs> I've had people not understand the watch thing. I've had to explain it to them five years ago and now they want me to help them. For sure. For get, sure. Get, get the first watch. Yeah. It, is, it is actually contagious. And you don't have to accompany this sort of rich bitch lifestyle. Exactly. I clean up dog poop wearing a paddock. You can take something from a high style sort of culture and adopt it into your own sure. culture. I think also when you think about what watches were when they came out last century, I mean these were tools. You know, these were essentially right. something to like get stuff done. With. That's right. And if you treat watches that way, then right. it's no big deal. They were the iPhone five for sure of their day. Yeah, you just needed one. It has a chronograph. That's an that's, that's like helpful, an app. Right? Yeah, that's useful. It's yeah. like your app. So, right. Right. Uh, a GMT is one of the world's greatest apps. For sure. It really is. That's why we love these watches. So what did you bring with you on tour? I'm only bringing about two watches on tour. I'll show you one that I just got. This is the Patek 5164A. Travel time. They call the travel time. Yeah. It's a great watch and I wear it on stage most of the time. Tiffany dial as well? That is a Tiffany dial. I don't think I've seen that before. I always like the rare inside. Look closer, <laughs> but look closer, <laughs> but look closer still. Look inside the A of Tiffany, and you'll see a small photo of myself as a child. <laughs> you know. The other watch that it sort of competes with on this tour is the new GMT Blue Black. The GMT movement is Rolex's, I think, their greatest movement. It's the best contemporary watch that Rolex makes. And I feel like these two together are great, contemporary, thoughtful watch collectors watches that aren't like bringing Fort Knox on the road with you. So you keep these on tour. You bring anything else, bring anything old? I'll show you the watch that I've worn the most since I hit the road. This watch is 10 years old now. It's the Big Pilot. This is the reference 5002. If you look from like 2002 to 2005 or six, I'm wearing this watch on stage every single night. If you're landing and the local time is five because you land in LA, you just, done. You're there. That's the fastest time setting I've ever had. Yep. Then you take it off to go to bed, right? And you take it off to go to bed and you put it on the nightstand. And it's a clock. What a giant clock. You have a clock. <laughs> if you're a watch lover, Sometimes the blue book value doesn't matter. This is the original Cousteau diver's watch. I'm attached to it. I put it on every time I go on vacation and I'm in the water and you, you just look at that dial and it's, it's really one of the coolest dials I've ever seen. And that just represents liking a watch. It doesn't like represent it. saying when I go to dinner everybody's gonna go, ooh, wow, what's that? And that's when you're really having fun as a collector. I think if you can have something like that and say you like it, that would be like being a Ferrari collector and going, I love the Ford Focus. Yeah. <laughs> 
kind of off the beaten path as far as sport Rolex goes. It's a uh, Comex 1680. As the story goes, they never went in the water because they weren't pressure rated to be able to go down as far as the divers were. So these were given to people in the office. And yeah, these are really, really rare watches. They're you really see a lot of rare. Like 55, 14, yep. 13s, but you don't see too many. No. This is a watch if you wore to dinner, it's invisible to people unless they know what it is. Absolutely. Those are my favorite watches. Along with that Comex, the military sub, there's a 5513 and there's a 5517, and this is the 17. You love this watch, right? I do. I absolutely love that watch. It's one of my uh, favorites. This is like the Grail Samaritan. This is like the Mac Daddy Samaritan. It's the yeah. Mac Daddy Samaritan, yeah. It's awesome. For a lot of reasons. Fixed spring bars. Yeah. Tritium dial with the T on it. Custard hands that match the it's gorgeous. sword hands. And then the fully gradiated the bezel. The bezel. Yeah, it's great. And the thing is, too, you can still bang it around. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's still a rugged watch. Someone else banged it around more than you ever could. Big time. People were crawling through the mud wearing that watch. Yeah. So you can wear it and hit a door jam with it. You're going to yeah. be fine, yeah. you know? If there's one watch you wanted to buy, and it's affordable in sort of the world of the relative pricing of vintage watches, it's not unique. It's not special. It's just great and it represents this sort of centerpiece of all vintage Rolex collecting, which is the 6263 non-Paul Newman Daytona. And I almost would say black dial. Yeah, you gotta go black, black on black. Yeah, there's something about that watch. It's the only vintage Daytona you'll ever need. If you wore this out, people would go, that guy knows what he's doing. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of the best watches ever made. It's one of the I best really watches it. ever made. Yeah. The other one that sort of is its mate, I believe, in my opinion, is the 5970. And there's nothing special about either of these watches in that it's, they're not double stamped. This one doesn't have Tiffany on it, neither of them do. There's nothing interesting about the dial outside of what's in, offered in the catalog. It's just sort of the Daytona of Patek. 5970, 3970 is as good as it gets. As good as it gets. It's just awesome. And, it, and by the way, what makes it even more special is as good as it may ever get. But they tell stories. I mean, that was my tour for five, six years. Yeah. That was me in Germany, jet lagged, tired, a broken shell of a man. <laughs> Sometimes it just comes down to you and your watch. Yeah. And you go, can I please get a hotel room before the gig to sleep for three hours? And they dump you in a hotel room like you're in the born identity or something. And you just have this in your watch. That's really a bonding thing, yeah. you know? This is when I go away on vacations. I have great time. I have margaritas in the pool, staring at this watch, going like, wow, this is cool. It's not, it's, it's not materialistic as much as people may think. You have to have these to say you collect. Who knows if it's a tick or if it's you know a blessing in some way or another, but people have that tick. I have that tick. I've had it since I was born. People say, well, I have the time right here. It's 158, and that's not what it's about. For me, I get into things very deeply when I get into them. I got into the guitar, and I never stopped. Yeah, it's excessive in some way, but there is an excessiveness to ambition as well. 